Hey sisters, it's your sister, Sun Goddess 89. Thank y'all for continuing to comment, like, and share my content. It really means a lot to me. So today's topic is Brian McKnight is losing his fan base and people aren't buying his tickets. Let's dive into it. What about Brian McKnight a few days ago? He said some ridiculous things about his own children, called them evil, right? Well, looks like people are not going to his concert now. And just like that, Brian McKnight cancels his show in Detroit because they was flaming him in the comments. Now shout out to Phil over on Twitter because he said, update, Brian McKnight's upcoming concert in Detroit has been canceled. Now prior to Brian McKnight canceling that show, Phil had tweeted that he was getting cooked in the Facebook comments. Now over on the Motor City Casino page on Facebook, they were stating that Brian McKnight was supposed to be performing on June 9th. I could pause to read it, but it just says smooth tunes with Brian McKnight. So check it out and get your tickets, blase swaze. Let me remind you of his commentary, here it is. So lastly this week, I want to big up my man right here. See, he gets it. In order to live a life that you love, you have to get rid of the evil and the negativity, even if that evil and negativity is related. Sisters, let's hear his sons from his first wife sing, just like their dad, Brian. Have you ever felt what it feels like to be walking on clouds without a doubt? That you're at where you're supposed to be. Have you ever felt that you could be living in a dream? Maybe a fantasy. So sure that it's made believe. You know what I mean? Let me see you throw your hands up. Cause you know that you got someone and you want everyone to know it. You're not afraid to show what you're feeling. What you're feeling deep inside. Why is he disowning his children like this? Only him and God knows the real reason. Now go ahead and scream and shout. Let it all out and don't hold nothing back. Go ahead and react to how you're feeling. How you feeling deep inside. Throw your hands in the air if you know that you're in love, love, love. Cause you know that you're in love, love, love. Cause you know that you're in love, love. Love, you're in love, love, yeah, yeah. Well, my two boys, BJ is my oldest, um, Brian Jr. and Nico is your and my Drake voice. It was all good just a week ago. He was claiming his children. Younger brother, they have sort of a rock, pop, R&B sort of hybrid that they do together that everyone here in London and actually all over the world now, I've taken them everywhere I've gone for the last two years, have seen what, what's about to happen and that's their seeing to be released later on this year. What can we expect from your album? Everything. A lot of stuff. Everything. <laughs> if there's a certain genre movie of music you'd like to hear, we've got. They do all the music themselves. I'm just here to sort of be the executive producer. Oh, I got I'm the most proudest dad on the, on the planet Earth. Yes, sisters, y'all heard what he said. He was the most proudest father on the planet Earth. Don't get me wrong. Children can do stuff to make parents upset. But to cut them off and disown them like this, that's crazy. Have a really healthy, fun relationship with them, like with your <laughs> stage interactions. So, uh, what what kind of advice have you given them in terms of tackling the industry? Tips: never say can't, never say can't. And uh, tips: always give one hundred and ten percent. Always, always make sure your flies are closed. Yeah, <laughs> um, eat stuff all like that. You know the normal dad stuff. Yeah. Well, I haven't really given them advice. I let them see what this job entails by being with me all the time they get to see how much work it is the fact that he's able to do so many things aside from singing tv radio broadway Oboe. all that yeah you know all that kind of stuff the gazoo uh, and i think that they see that uh they're ready to sort of they wouldn't have been ready to do this two or three years ago so i felt that it was important for them to actually get hands-on experience and uh, I think they're ready now. Hi, we're McKnight, and you're watching Soul Culture. You can't be watching a website. You can. Oh, you can? Yeah. Why else would they? You can. <laughs> Watch it. His boys have beautiful voices. We want everyone to live a life that you love our hashtag. That's what it means. Hashtag I love our life. But in order to do that, you have to get rid of all that evil and negativity. There's so many angry and upset and negative people out there. We Let's hear a little bit from his former ex-wife. Um, my children, in light of 
the horrible comments that were brought to my attention today um, in reference to so many things that should just be done with from the past. Hi, all y'all coming in. If I'm not able to just give hugs and waves to all of you, um, I see you and I appreciate you being here and I appreciate the support that you've given me. Those of you who do follow me, you know how I strive to live within a space of positivity. I try daily to make a conscious effort to remain in that space because outside of that isn't a happy place to be. Um, physically, mentally, spiritually, it's better for me to be in a space where I make sure that the joy is what's around me because I have so much to be thankful for, so many things that I'm grateful for and I know the way the devil works and I know that in those times where blessings, where blessings are bountiful, he likes to creep in and he likes to use things that he feels will touch parts of you, touch parts of you to bring you out of a space where your energy is brought to a lower vibration lower level because then you're no longer able to continue on a path where you are okay that day and that time and that moment and in those seconds it will and has has been and will forever be in reference to my children as i'm sure most mamas are as i'm sure most daddies are and at some point it's just enough it's just enough and it has to be clear that and hopefully it can help some other folk who might be dealing with situations where there's a constant gnaw of ridiculousness that's trying to get its way almost like a rat that knows there's food on the other side that will nourish every part of them because they're not getting it and with this situation it's attention so that rat just keeps digging and it keeps digging and it chews through wires and it chews through holes in any way it can find an end to hopefully get into your space snatch everything so you can go running through the house and try to hit it with a broom that's what their intent is I want you, just as I daily am trying my best to do, is to find those spaces where you don't allow that into your space. And I know there's some that's gonna say, well, you're addressing it now, why? Because he said something about you. I, the things that have been said about me, you would not believe the things that could be said be sure to like share and subscribe the point of it is nothing i don't want to draw attention to anything and if i ever do it is only to help if there's someone who's in a situation who feels like they're being just pushed pushed prodded probed this is that type of situation where everything, of course, in me wants to run amok <laughs> through every street in this city and that city and the other city and just, and that would do what? The point at the end of every negative situation, whether it's an illness, whether it's a fool that you have to deal with because they keep entering your life when you are no longer giving any more energy to it. It's to only keep you down to where they thought they had you because they knew that they were the author of an extreme situation, emotionally, mentally. And they're no good at not being the center of that attention anymore. So when everybody pulls that away, 
It's like a kid who throws a tantrum. I'm not gonna do. I'm gonna do more. I'm gonna raise up. I'm gonna lay. My voice is gonna get louder until I end up on the ground kicking and screaming. And and then I'm gonna show you that you know. I got you. No, no. You continue to stay in that space that keeps you cool. And I'm telling you this from experience because this is a time where I do understand that things can hit here. And at this point, on a day like today, it's here. <laughs> I never abandoned anyone. Our estrangement was mutual, but those posts made any roads towards reconciliation and acknowledging them a dead issue. And I changed my will the next day. I've spent the last 30 plus years building a recognized, respectable name. And ironically, there are still people out there who are trying to smear my name while still carrying it, hoping to use it for their own benefit. Okay, listen, I appreciate, you know, all the love and all of the concern and all of that as usual. But to the particular group of people that are always like, yo, you should change your name. You should change your name. Why the f I do that? First of all, I love my name. I appreciate my name. I appreciate my lineage. I appreciate where my name comes from. And it's also my son's name. So I just in my heart feel like that I would give off such an incredibly wrong message, an example for my son when it comes to loving his name and what his legacy could be if I change my name just because of what my father did. If I was Brian McKnight Jr., I wouldn't change my name either. I will always be Brian McKnight Jr. no matter what, and you're going to get this work from all of us from here on out. Welcome to my TED Talk. I make absolutely no apologies for naming my infant son Brian. I want him and the world to know that he is the one who is my true legacy. He hated his first son so much, his newborn baby can't even have his own identity. So I'll be over here, continuing to love and protect my wife and our children as we continue to love our life. I don't know if Brian Bignac has veneers or dentures. <laughs> so it's beneficial to kind of bring it in a space that makes sense again, which leads me to this. That's all I'm going to give that. I just wanted to thank y'all so much. But on the other side, and this makes me happy and excited, um, most, a lot of the comments and a lot of the DMs I've gotten today and the virtual hugs and everything I've received, at the end of most of them is when is the book coming out? And I'll tell you this, the book is done. We want to use our platform as a place of positivity. So look, here's another somebody asking about my one and only daughter, Julia. If I was Brian, my current wife, I will be watching Brian very carefully. He's claiming to only have one daughter, which is his stepdaughter. But that's not true. He has one biological daughter. She sued his behind for defamation because he said that she was sleeping with her cousin or something like that. Anyway, Brian McKnight is not to be trusted. He has four baby mothers, one child by his current wife, two children by his um, first wife, and two children out of wedlock. That man is not to be trusted. Asking about how she feels about a post about her graduation. Well, how do you think she feels? She feels great. See, Julia understands the scriptures. Exodus 20, 12, where it says, and I quote, honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. See, she honors us. And in turn, we honor her because she knows how proud of her we are. Sisters, let's not be surprised if he end up like Kevin Samuels. Now here's something, if you're going to leave snide comments, at least allow us to tag you when we reply. Uh, it's so cowardly, but. Oh, man. Well, sir, I hope you're still, you know, enjoying calling your children evil and saying that they're illegitimate. Um, because your fans, well, they're not buying your tickets. Now put it a full mass. You know, it hurt my heart to hear Brian McKnight talk about his children in such a callous way. It was almost as if he had enjoyment at othering his own children. He said even more things that were completely 
completely heartbreaking. Fans of R&B singer Brian McKnight are refusing to attend his upcoming concert due to his own unfortunate comments he made about his children. McKnight has two sons, Brian Jr. and Nico with his ex-wife, Julie. McKnight also fathered a daughter, Brianna, with a woman named Patricia Driver and has another son named Clyde with an unknown woman. McKnight also shares a son, uh, McKnight also shares a son, Brian um, uh, Mocha Jr. with two stepchildren, Julia and Jack, and his wife, Lee Laney and McKnight. But the forever singer is estranged from his older children due to his comments about them on social media. Fans have now turned on the anytime singer after he said he did not acknowledge his biological daughter, Brianna, because she was illegitimate. Now, if you heard in that video, he said, my one and only daughter, and he, he denies the other one. Um, and so he calls her illegitimate, uh, and he called all of his older children a, quote, product of sin and evil, um, is what he calls his children, okay, that, that he fathered. Uh, McKnight also reportedly refused to tell his son Nico that he loved him as he battled cancer earlier this year. He just wanted his father to say, I love him, even though um, his father has not been there as he should. Although the artist claimed he did everything he could to help his son financially, but was thwarted by hostile behavior from a call from his ex-wife. Hey everybody, we are still here in London, riding high after the concerts this weekend with Boys to Men. And we are so grateful for all of the love. I wanted to take a few moments to talk about something that I'd already addressed six months ago, but I hesitate to talk about it now because the subject matter is so sensitive and so serious that I don't believe it's for public consumption. But because people keep asking me about it, uh, I feel a need to address this once again. Six months ago, when we found out about this, we called him, we talked to him, we talked to his wife. She told us that she was all alone and handling everything all by herself. And it became quickly evident to us that since they didn't have insurance and they didn't have access to the proper doctors, naturally, and even though all this nonsense has been going on for years, we jumped into action. We asked for his medical reports. We received those medical reports. We hand delivered them to the best specialists in the country. Those specialists outlined a plan of action that would give him the best fighting chance. Uh, we miraculously found a treatment facility near our home uh, that put him at the top of the list and then we put down a deposit to secure that place. We were arranging to fly the two of them to our home privately so that she could be with him and not have to work and really just focus on his treatment. Uh, and in the midst of that, we received a very hostile phone call from his mother saying, do not contact him. He does not need your help. And I can only imagine that if that help came from me, that it would go against the strong narrative that's being pushed out there about me. So what are we doing? We're adhering to her wishes because that's what she wanted and we're staying out of it. I believe his ex-wife only said that because, sir, what have you been doing throughout the years? I don't really think she really didn't want him to like take care of that responsibility. Sometimes us women, we do get upset. Um, the Detroit concert venue shared a promotion for Midnight show on Facebook on April 23rd, along with a picture of the 54 year old singer. However, fans swiftly rejected McKnight in the comment section and they did not miss words. Wouldn't even go for free, replied one Facebook user. Another fan wrote, sir, absolutely not. Along with a, a gift from the uh, text, hell no. Another fan noted that they would reconsider if the singer brought his children. Tell him, bring his kids and we might come. And nobody coming to see you old Otis, added another. Another fan joke, I know good and hell well, this ain't Father's Day weekend, is it? No, he needs to start back at one and put his kids first. I'm good, added one Facebook user. Quote, Brian canceled himself once he canceled them kids, echoed another. You know, sad, man. You know why your fans are responding this way? Because you build a fan base on love, Ryan. You build a fan base on love, love songs. And the people that connected to you, connected to you because of that commonality of love, the belief in it, and also the belief that you believed in it as well. Once your fans understood that you did not really believe in love as they understood love, your fan base is now, well, they're heartbroken and upset. For me, 
Um, I'm a passive listener to your music, sir. Um, I think you're talented. I think you have enjoyed many blessings in this life. I feel for your children because I understand what that means to want someone to love you and they won't. Sisters, will y'all be going to the next Brian McKnight concert? I sure will not. Get in the comments section. Let's hear your thoughts about this.